Uh, it's not going to be easy to pick only one picture, but uh, if I had to start with one, it would be this image of my last studio. I built this space in 2018 when I felt this urge to have uh, an inspiring environment to create. I like the fact that it's quite abstract in this picture. Uh, it looks very organic, like uh, the inside of a body or um, something anatomical. I needed a space that could resonate with the flow of information, images, um, the feelings and emotions I was processing. And I also needed this setup uh, to convey this idea of something very saturated, uh, an accumulation of objects, machines, cables, papers. And uh, the studio became quickly a real mess, but um, was somehow a good representation of what I was trying to achieve art-wise. Uh, musically, I'm uh, often drawn to dance, complex soundscapes uh, that rely on a certain form of uh, turmoil, disorder, uh, confusion to reveal something. I had this old analog TV set uh, playing all sorts of content from 80s, 90s movies, animal documentaries, but also slaughterhouse footage and intensive farming videos that I was using for my work. Uh, I was processing the sound from the videos uh, through my mixer and effects to incorporate them in other contexts. Um, this aesthetic and this character who looks like someone working in a lab or some type of mad scientist uh, was born out of a clear vision. I was uh, definitely channeling something and driven by what we could describe as a calling. When COVID-19 happened, it all made sense to me as um, it was like a reality glitch to see uh, this aesthetic and all these connections I was trying to draw between meat consumption, animal exploitation and its possible consequences becoming reality. Um, if I had to compare myself to someone, I would be like the character uh, F.M. and Hyde in the movie Decoder from 1984. Um, Decoder is about F.M., the main character, discovering that uh, the monotonous background music played in the fast food restaurant H. Burger hides subliminal messages designed to ensure passivity and consumerism and uh, it appears to be also suppressing people's emotions. He realized that different sonic frequencies induce different patterns of behavior in listeners, that by changing the type of music played he can trigger a whole range of emotional feedback and stir up the masses from their blind subordination. But as the patrons are emotionally awakened, they become more and more prone to rioting and general social unrest. Um, the film was inspired by uh, William S. Burroughs' thoughts on uh, revolutionary counter tactics, such as uh, the use of tape recorders, cut ups, scrambling, infrasound, and noise, um, giving birth to what we could refer to as anti music. Before I ever heard of his uh, cut-up technique, I was already into this fragmentation, dynamic and collage process and how um, snapshots, samples can resonate, uh, assemble or resist each other. So it was very interesting to make these connections uh, on how these techniques can disrupt listening habits and mental associations. Um, and how powerful they can be in playing back and distorting the notion of reality. Um, it was also very interesting to get into his uh, revised uh, Boy Scout manual, which is a kind of manifesto on how to uh, overthrow a corrupt government. And in this book, it involves the weaponizing of chemicals, animals, viruses and sound. Which brings me back to the movie Decoder, where um, the idea of resistance is deeply linked with the microbial and viral realm. Uh, in the movie, the virus that makes people sick is sound waves, which are as invisible as viruses. And if we put it in perspective with uh, what we're experiencing now, one could wonder whether there's a resistance 
outside our uh, outside of human will trying to defeat our dystopian relationship with the natural world um, as you can see music is somehow um, just a way to draw a bigger picture Even if I'm part of a few collectives working towards uh, gender equality in the music industry, I don't really identify as a woman. Um, I feel it's more comfortable and liberating to identify as an animal. And uh, it's mainly uh, through this lens that I interact with my environment, with others, and uh, also on a professional level. Uh, I realized that it works better for me to base my interactions on a certain form of um, animal intuition. I try to learn to trust my first impressions, feelings, uh, to identify certain dynamics, uh, to spot predation, and to also attract people that are more in line with what I'm trying to achieve. Um, I'm interested in people who hold a vision that goes beyond humans, um, or to put it differently, that are aware of the power and domination structures between species and uh, eager to challenge them. Um, I'm currently working on gathering a group of sound artists around this vision and uh, would love to build a growing community around it. Uh, in this project there are people identifying as male, female or non-binary, but um, I really didn't make any effort to maintain a certain balance. It just happens naturally because uh, I'm connected to diverse and inclusive networks. So uh, I believe a curator job is to research and find these spaces. Uh, if today a festival or any other event ends up with a male dominated lineup, it means that they're either uh, too lazy to do their work or um, it's a creation choice, uh, a statement, because uh, they literally have no excuse. Um, I also think that the tools we have available to reflect on inequality or injustice have their limits. Um, they rarely embrace the spectrum of struggles I'm interested in, and I would be more comfortable if they had a larger uh, perspective of how I perceive oppression. Uh, so when I say that I identify more as an animal uh, than a woman, it's also in response to that. I would like to finish by saying that uh, innovative social structures should get inspired from collective behavior of animals. A shoal of fish, a swarm of locusts, a colony of ants can all act as super organisms, where the group as a whole makes collective decisions. However, social dominance is a dynamic inherent to nature itself. Behavioral studies show that there was a social hierarchy among pigeons. They studied their behavior in different contexts, like feeding, queuing, pecking order, or flying. The leaders in flock flying were different from those that were socially dominant during the feeding exercise. Because of the complications involved in flock flying, it is possible that a somewhat less aggressive and possibly better informed individual takes the leading position. Similar behavior has been observed among meerkats and mosquito fish, where, depending on the context, hierarchies in the group change. And there's a lot to learn from this. Um, no one ever asked me if Sukitu Aonama was my real name and if not, what it stands for. Um, it's actually an anagram of my real name and I wanted a Japanese sounding name because I've been asked my entire life if I was Asian, so I decided to embrace this confusion and blur the lines. And the funny thing is that when my mom was pregnant, she wanted me to look like a Japanese boy on a picture she had. Um, there's this superstitious belief in Morocco that a pregnant woman can influence her child's appearance by exposing herself to a specific imagery. Um, it works like the law of attraction, so looking at a picture and visualizing would somehow influence the baby's features. 
Um, also, identity-wise, I relate more to my Amazir origins than the Arab ones. Uh, Amazir are the indigenous people of North Africa. Amazir means free people. And the earliest tribes believed and practiced animism. Uh, the belief that all living things, including plants and animals, have a soul and spirit. And uh, there's also a lot of mysteries surrounding their origins. I've always been fascinated by how Amazir music reminded me of a certain tuning that we can hear in East Asian music. It really sounds like they use uh, similar string instruments. And I don't know to what extent this similarity inspired an iconic Amazir musician called Teshinuit, which I think could be translated by Chinese female or the Chinese. Um, she emphasized this in her look and her music while keeping it traditional, which was a very interesting fusion. Um, she's popular in Morocco, but also performed uh, around the world. And um, the funny thing is that she ended up having a huge success in Japan and China. Um, not sure if her nickname was given to her by the public regarding her Asian features or uh, if she picked it up herself, but she definitely inspired my artist name. Uh, this is a nightmare of which I unfortunately have a clear memory. I hear dogs uh, screaming at night. I hear gunshots. I know what is happening. I know that the dogs are being shot. I know those sounds. I've heard this combination many times before in Morocco, where stray dogs are often being killed at night. I can hear the dogs screaming. Their cries and screams hold a clear message. They are warning us. Their message sounds familiar, like something I feel I have heard in a movie before. They scream this. I suddenly remember where I've heard it all before. These are the words of Marguerite Duras in Hiroshima Mon Amour. And deep down, I now know what the dogs mean. Thank you.